Are you curious about fertility treatment options? Maybe you've been trying for a while and no luck yet. Thinking about making an appointment with a fertility doctor like me, but you're curious about what we're going to talk about and what options are available to you. You've heard about IUI and IVF, but it's confusing and what are all of these acronyms anyway? Today, I'm going to walk you through the difference between intrauterine insemination, or IUI, versus in vitro fertilization, or IVF. We're going to talk about the difference between these two options and reasons people choose one over the other. You'll finish understanding more about your options and knowing what next step is right for you. Welcome to the Brave and Curious podcast, where we do a deep dive into fertility, reproductive health, and wellness with science and compassion. I'm your host, Dr. Laura Shaheen, a double board certified OBGYN and reproductive endocrinologist, staying brave and curious with you. Today, I am curious about the difference between IUI and IVF, and I am really looking forward to explaining this step by step. Today, we are going to go over a little background to kind of understand exactly the difference between IUI and IVF, and then we're going to talk about pros and cons of each and kind of ways to help you figure out the right path for you. So first of all, IUI stands for intrauterine insemination, and IVF is in vitro fertilization. So fertility is full of acronyms, and so we and they're long-term, so we often just say IUI instead of saying intrauterine insemination over and over again, or IVF instead of saying in vitro fertilization over and over again. They are both fertility treatments, but they're totally different. An IUI or intrauterine insemination, last time I'll say that. So IUI is the process of washing and prepping sperm and placing it past the cervix into the uterine cavity around the time of ovulation. So it is helping with timing. It's kind of getting the best sperm past the cervix closer to where it needs to be. But once you put the sperm in, you have no idea what happens. So it's helpful. It's kind of working with your cycle. It's pretty simple when it's compared to IVF. IVF is totally different. In vitro fertilization is the process of giving medications to the ovaries in order to recruit more than one or two eggs. Uh, sometimes people will get five eggs, sometimes people get 25 eggs, but you're recruiting multiple eggs, getting the eggs out of the body through a pretty simple procedure. It's called an egg retrieval, but getting the eggs into the lab, fertilizing with sperm. IVF in vitro means in the lab, in vitro fertilization. So egg and sperm are fertilized in the lab. You watch the embryos grow in the lab. And when the embryos are ready, you put the embryo into the uterus for implantation with a little catheter that goes through the cervix and you place the embryo into the uterus. So these two things are both fertility treatments with the goal of helping people conceive, um, but they are totally different and there's pros and cons of each. So before you really decide on a treatment, you should make sure you've had fertility testing. Uh, you should make sure you have a semen analysis. You should make sure that the fallopian tubes are open with the hysterosalpingogram. Um, you really should do fertility testing because the results of the fertility tests could really dictate which one you choose. For example, if the fallopian tubes are blocked, that is why IVF was invented. It's a way to get pregnant by bypassing the fallopian tubes. But let's say that the fertility testing is pretty normal. There's sperm, the fallopian tubes are open, you've got eggs, you're ovulating. You really kind of are choosing between the IUI or IVF, then that's when this discussion might really come into play because sometimes your diagnosis really dictates what you're going to do. So the pros of an IUI is that it is usually a simpler process, um, less complicated, works with the menstrual cycle, less medication and lower cost. So it's a, it's pretty common for people who have unexplained infertility or they've been trying for a while. It's not working. Um, a typical path is to, of course, do the evaluation and make sure you're not missing anything, but to try IUI first because it is more simple and it's less costly. And if it is successful, then that is fantastic. The downside of IUI is that it has a lower success rate than IVF. 
typically because it's controlling for some variables. Like it can really help. It's often done with medication to help kind of pull forward the best eggs. You often will do it with an ultrasound to kind of make sure the timing is okay. Maybe a trigger shot to trigger ovulation. Um, you're washing and prepping the sperm. So it's kind of getting the best sperm modal sperm kind of past the cervix closer to where it needs to go. So you're doing all of these steps, but at the end of the day, you're just putting sperm in around the time of ovulation and you're hoping all those steps afterwards happen. You know, does the egg get into the fallopian tube? Do the egg and sperm like each other? Does fertilization happen? Is the embryo continue to develop? Does implantation happen? You know, there's so much that happens in that two week wait that IUI is not always successful. In general, the success rate for an IUI is around 10 to 20% per try depending on so many different variables. It depends on the age of the people that are trying. It depends on their diagnosis. It depends on the length of time of infertility or that they've been trying. But in general, the success rate is at most 20% for an IUI. So IVF can be an option and it can be um, a higher success rate, mainly because you're controlling for more variables. So you're working with more eggs in a cycle. You are getting those eggs out of the body. You're making sure fertilization is happening. You're watching the embryos grow. And then you're even selecting from these embryos the best one to transfer. So just in all of that selection process, before you even try to get pregnant with IVF, you already know you have an embryo, you know, you have a fertilized egg, and then you're placing it into the uterine cavity. Now it's not hundred percent successful, but it's more successful than IUI the vast majority of the time, because you're just controlling for more variables. So that's a big pro of IVF is it's typically a lot more successful. Another pro of IVF is it allows you to do genetic screening on embryos, which you can't do with IUIs. Um, a lot of my patients have multiple miscarriages from chromosomally abnormal embryos. And so if they're coming to me for a recurrent miscarriage, um, it's an option that we talk about. It is not perfect. It is not for everyone, but if someone's conceiving easily and they keep conceiving with embryos that have chromosome abnormalities, this is a way to decrease the risk of miscarriage by testing embryos for chromosome balance before they get pregnant. IVF addresses more fertility issues than an IUI does. An IUI is wonderful for patients in which the person with sperm has kind of borderline sperm counts. You have to have a, a good amount of sperm to have success with an IUI, but sometimes it's kind of a borderline count, like five to 10 million. And by getting that sperm kind of closer um, past the hurdles, kind of closer to the egg around the time of ovulation, that can really help. It can help a mild male factor. If somebody has really low sperm count, like less than a million sperm. That is just not enough sperm to be successful with an IUI. I am sure that someone out there is going to write a comment in this video and say, I had less than a million sperm and I conceived with an IUI. And that is awesome. But in general, you really do need a good amount of sperm to be successful with IUI. We'll get back to learning more about the differences between IUI and IVF. But before we do, I want to thank you so much for being here today. Your engagement with the show helps others find it. So take a minute and follow the show wherever you're listening. Give us a review and let us know briefly what you find valuable and what you want to learn about next. Thank you again for being here. Now let's get back to learning. The downside of IVF is certainly it's more expensive, like astronomically more expensive than IUI. Another downside is it's much more complicated. It's more shots. Uh, it, there's more appointments. It requires a procedure called an egg retrieval in order to get the eggs out of the body. Um, in my clinic, patients are typically asleep and comfortable and don't feel anything for the egg retrieval, um, but it's still, it's a procedure and it's um, typically, you know, more bloating, a recovery. Um, it's just a more complicated, more expensive process. Another downside of IVF is it can be um, ethically challenging to figure out what to do with embryos that you 
might not use. If your family goal is to have two kids and you do an egg retrieval that results in multiple embryos and you have the family of your dreams, you're going to have to figure out what to do with the embryos that are left over. So it's important to think about that before you jump into IVF and create those embryos. You want to have those conversations before you have embryos to try to figure out what to do with. One pro of IVF that I talk to my patients about, but a lot of people don't necessarily think about is with IVF, it can be a benefit to have multiple embryos because you can use IVF as a fertility preservation tool. So we think about egg freezing as a way to freeze fertility. But if you think about it, let's say you're starting your family in your late 30s or early 40s, it might be pretty easy to conceive the first child, but if you want to add to your family later in life and now you're over the age of 40, you don't know what your fertility would be like in the future. And so using IVF, not only as a way to conceive now with an embryo, but having some embryos frozen for a sibling in the future can really keep your options open. So sometimes I see people and we're trying to talk about, well, should we do IUI? Should we do IVF? A big question I have is what is your family goal? You know, if they say, I've always just want to have one kid, like that is perfect for me. That was, that is my goal. And then I sort of say, well, let's try IUI because if you're successful and you have a baby with it, you have your family and you don't have excess embryos to worry about and you've met your goal. If patient's 40 years old and we're talking about IUI versus IVF, there's no question that IVF has a higher chance of success for that person um, now, but also if they were trying again, when they're 42 or 43, there can be a dramatic change in fertility over time. And so if they have embryos waiting for them, it can be a higher chance of building that family that is their goal. So how do you choose your path? You know, if you've done the testing and both options are open to you, it's a really important discussion to have with your doctor. Don't just assume that you automatically are going to do three to four IUIs and then do IVF, or don't just assume that you're going to automatically go straight to IVF. It's important to talk about and think about and make a deliberate and right decision for you. So a lot of the times the decision will be made for you. Your diagnosis could make your decision. So if your fallopian tubes are blocked, it does not make sense to do IUI. The egg and sperm will not be able to find each other. Blocked fallopian tubes. That was the reason IVF was invented 40 plus years ago. It's a way to get pregnant by bypassing the fallopian tubes. You get the eggs directly from the ovaries, combine it with sperm in the lab instead of in the tube. And then when the embryo is ready, you put the embryo in with a catheter through the cervix. I say it's coming through a different door. It's not coming down through the fallopian tube. It's going up through the cervix and that's how you get pregnant. If the reason that you're not getting pregnant is because you are not ovulating. So a patient, a young patient with PCOS that only gets a period every three to six months, well, that doesn't necessarily mean that they have to go straight to IVF. Let's try to get them to ovulate with some simple medication. If they ovulate and we can get the sperm where it needs to go, maybe they can get pregnant without IVF. So your diagnosis could dictate your path. Your family goals could dictate your path, depending on your age and your family goals. Talk about your goals with your doctor and what makes sense for you. If you're young and you have a lot of fertile years ahead of you, maybe it is okay to conceive with an IUI. If you are in your late thirties, early forties, and your goal is to have more than one child, talk about IVF, talk about using it as a means of fertility preservation, not just a way of conceiving today. Finances could really dictate your path. IUI is significantly less expensive than IVF, and that might really make the right sense for you right now. Insurance sometimes can dictate what you do. There are some insurance policies out there that mandate that someone does three to six IUIs before they will cover IVF. That is a whole nother debate about insurance dictating medical recommendations and medical care, but be sure if you've got coverage, that is fantastic. And that's wonderful. And it, that's the way it should be. And we're 
fighting for that. Um, but not everybody has coverage. Not enough people have access to care for treatment that they need. But if you do have coverage, read it very carefully and talk to your insurance benefits and talk to the clinic and their financial team, because there could be restrictions within that that might dictate your path. Ethics might decide for you what's right. If it's going to be ethically challenging for you to discard embryos, you might not ever want to do IVF. I do have patients that are ethically challenged with having more embryos available than they feel comfortable with. And one option is to not fertilize all the eggs. In general, people feel more comfortable discarding eggs than embryos. And if that's the case, you don't have to fertilize all the eggs. You just have to realize though, that there are some financial implications with that. And it, I try to be very transparent and make sure it's really clear with the patients that you can do whatever you want. You could only fertilize one egg. You could only fertilize, you know, half of the eggs, whatever is right for you. But if you don't meet your goals with the eggs that were fertilized and you do have to go and thaw frozen eggs in order to fertilize them and um, transfer more embryos, there's going to be a higher financial cost with that. It's absolutely okay, but it's just important to really understand um, what it means to make that choice for yourself. It's just really important to have that conversation before you get started and make sure you really understand what the implications are for your situation. So to recap, we talked about IUI versus IVF and how different these two fertility treatments are. The end goal is the same. It's conceiving, but the path to get there is totally different. IUI is less expensive, less complicated, but it controls for fewer variables and it has a lower chance of success. IVF is certainly more expensive, certainly more complicated, but it controls for more variables as higher success rate, and it can be used as a fertility preservation option. So they are dramatically different, but I think it's important to talk about. I've been helping people build families for years, and I have definitely seen a change. When I first started, it was a very typical path of doing three or four IUIs and then going to IVF. You know, IVF is sort of a very last resort. Nowadays, I think that IVF is off. It's definitely more successful than ever. There's a little bit more access to care for some people, and there's just more of an awareness. I think a lot more people are talking about IVF or more comfortable with it. And very often people are going straight to IVF without automatically doing IUIs beforehand. But I talk to each patient about what their goals are, their diagnosis and all the options. And I have a conversation with them, very similar to what I just did here. I hope you enjoyed this episode. I hope you found it valuable. I hope you're taking away a lot of knowledge about the different fertility treatment options that are available for you and how you can find the right way to take your next step. Thank you to my team at Audiotocracy for producing another wonderful show. Thank you again for being here. Take a minute to review the show wherever you're listening. Follow the show so you don't miss a weekly episode of Brave and Curious. You can find this episode and all others on my website, drlaurashaheen.com. You can also find links there to follow me on Instagram, YouTube, and TikTok. Until next week, stay brave and curious.